Hi, I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer from Marin County with a COVID-19 update for April 19th. I'd like to talk about the concept of community immunity or herd immunity and how it relates to Marin County currently. We are at 75% now among our residents vaccinated with at least one dose and about 50% have had both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. That puts us among the most highly vaccinated communities, but we remain vulnerable. We stalled out at that margin between the orange and the yellow tier. We're starting to see slight increases in cases. And I think it's incredibly important that we understand together why widespread vaccination and really reaching that 90% level is so critical for us to prevent ongoing outbreaks and in fact, to prevent a fourth surge. At 75% of our population being vaccinated with at least one dose, it still means that only three in 10 of our residents are fully immune. One of the ways I help you know, think about our strategies is to imagine how the virus thinks. Obviously the virus doesn't think, but, but sort of to imagine it has motives um, helps me understand what our strategy should be. When the virus infects someone, it has about 10 days to infect someone else. Right, so the clock starts, it's got 10 days to infect someone else, otherwise it's gonna die out. That particular thread, that chain of transmission will die because that person's immune system will fight it off and it won't have found another host. So let's imagine this is a Marin County resident who's a case who's infected and this is 10 people, just for their math, it's easier, 10 imagine in their sort of circle of exposure. Currently, three of those 10 in Marin are immune through vaccination. The reason that's only three, despite 75% having had at least one dose, is two things. One is that 20% of our population is not eligible to be vaccinated because they're, they're children under age, under age 16. So right off the bat, the best we're gonna do is 80%, right? So eight out of 10 would be the best we could do. And then if you think about it, it takes, you know, after the first dose is about a month before the second dose. Um, and then two weeks after that, you have full immunity. So we're looking at a population that has been, we've, we've moved vaccines forward very quickly, but because there's a whole pocket of our population that can't be vaccinated and because it takes up to six weeks really to develop immunity after the first dose, we're still a long way from true herd immunity. So right now, let's imagine we have that one individual who's infectious and capable of infecting other people. Seven people around them on average are susceptible in this county. Let's say they infect one other person. In the future, now we're gonna surround that person with 10 individuals. And this is where herd immunity starts coming in. Let's say we're far enough into the future where a greater fraction of our population is immune. Let's say eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people are now immune through vaccination. The likelihood the virus would find a host, someone who's susceptible, when, the, when 80% of the people around that person are, 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 are protected is much, much lower, right? So we're starting to get into the concept of herd immunity. But we'll say there's two who are really susceptible. Now let's say one of those people actually becomes infected into the future. Let's say now it's 90%. Again, the likelihood that that person would be able to find another host, you know, that someone else who's susceptible is even lower. And that's how chains of transmission that are actively go ongoing right now, again, eight to 10 cases um, per day in Marin County, up to 15 cases per day now. So these chains of transmission are occurring now. What we're trying to do is create dead ends. And the way we're gonna reach that is through non-pharmaceutical interventions, covering our face, physical distancing, et cetera. And then over time, the role of vaccine will become increasingly important in protecting us um, to the point where we're able to reach 90%. The likelihood that that virus would find someone else to infect during that 10 day interval of that opportunity becomes lower and lower. And that's how we get this pandemic behind us by having enough of us protected through vaccine while we maintain vigilance around those practices that prevent transmission in our everyday lives that's, that's the critical factor. We're not there yet. We're far from that. We have plenty of room for outbreaks. With only three out of 10 now fully immune through vaccinations, there's plenty of room for outbreaks. There's plenty of room for even a fourth surge. So that's why at the same time we celebrate the progress we've been making in vaccinations, we also need to 
understand our ongoing vulnerability, especially if we do move into that yellow tier where we have more opportunities, more freedom, um, that also brings more risk and more responsibility. So when we are all able to be vaccinated, it's critical to take advantage of the opportunity for vaccine, um, recognizing that it's something that we're doing not only for ourselves and our own personal health, but for the health of the community as a whole. And thank you again for doing your part.